We are the paradoxical ape. Bipedal, naked, large-brained. Long the master of fire, tools, and language, but still trying to understand ourselves. Aware that death is inevitable, yet filled with optimism. We grow up slowly. We hand down knowledge. We empathize and deceive. We shape the future from our shared understanding of the past. Carta brings together experts from diverse disciplines to exchange insights on who we are and how we got here. An exploration made possible by the generosity of humans like you. Hello everyone, and um, welcome to this short talk. And I'm and as we're as going to talk about the incidence of carcinomas in humans, and why that could be a little special. Um, here, this first slide shows a comparison of causes of death from various diseases in 1900 versus 2010. And as you can see, way back in 1900, most of the causes of disease in humans uh, showed up as infectious diseases. Whereas in 2010, most of the causes of disease, um, death in humans was either cancer or heart disease. Um, so what are the criteria for a human-specific disease? Well, it should be very commonly seen in humans and rarely report, reported in closely, closely related species such as the great apes, even in captivity. So malignant neoplasms or cancers appear in humans at different ages, some appearing in very young children like neuroblastoma and Wilms tumors. However, spontaneously occurring carcinomas, carcinomas are malignancies of epithelial cells of the breast, stomach, colon, lung, ovary, prostate, cervix, uterus, pancreas, etc., are common in older human populations. And on the right there, I put in some pathology, gross pictures of lesions I had seen, the top one showing a lobe of um, lung with a primary cancer right there. The next one shows an ulcerated carcinoma at the junction of the esophagus and stomach. And the next one is a breast carcinoma. This is actually showing the uh, typical bits that you see in cancer. It's called cancer because it's a crab. It extends into the surrounding tissue. So these carcinomas are also the ones most associated with various environmental factors such as diet and reproductive activity. Like humans, great apes have been reported to develop malignancies, but most of these malignancies arise in the blood cells, also called leukemias and lymphomas, and in mesenchymal tissues called sarcomas. However, spontaneously occurring carcinomas seem very rare in the non-human primate. The reason for the apparent rarity of carcinomas in great apes are unknown. Benign tumors of some of these organs have been reported, indicating that surveillance has been adequate, that thus it is possible that these carcinomas will begin to be reported in great apes as captive populations continue to age. So epithelium, in putting on my teaching hat here, epithelium, epi meaning outside, thelium means a cloak. So epithelial cells are those cells that communicate with the outside world. So squamous, the epithelium lining the skin, ear, canal, anus, cervix, vagina, esophagus. Columna, the cells lining the trachea lungs, lining the GI tract, the genitourinary tract, cells of the liver, cells of the pancreas, it makes enzymes, cuboidal epithelium of the kidney tubules, ovarian follicle, transitional epithelium of the bladder and ureter. Endothelium is another term. It's one layer of squamous epithelium that lines the blood vessels, but there's no communication with the outside. And so this is called the endothelium, um, lines all the blood vessels. 
So during embryogenesis, the three germ layers, endoderm, ectoderm, mesoderm, differentiate into epithelial and non-epithelial cells, which eventually form differentiated tissues and organs. Epithelial cells rise from stem cells and often line body surfaces that interact directly with the outside. They are typically attached to the underlying connected tissue by a basin membrane. And the underlying stroma includes blood vessels, lymphatic vessels, hematopoietic cells, stromal fibroblasts, extracellular matrix, neuronal structures, smooth muscle, adipose tissue, etc. So benign tumors is in benign uh, tumors is a new growth of cells which form a lump, but they don't invade the basin membrane like you'd see in a polyp or a lipoma, fibroadenoma, lyomyomas, which are also called fibroid tumors. Carcinomas arising from epithelial cells are invasive and can metastasize to different organs as shown here. This metastasis to the liver. Here's a metastasis in the brain cerebellum. And uh, carcinomas, as we saw before, um, as I explained before, arise as skin, cervix, esophagus, and lung. And then adenocarcinomas uh, are gut, lung, prostate, breast, etc. Sarcomas arise in supporting tissue and can be also invasive, like the lymphomas, melanomas, glioblastomas, osteosarcomas, fibrosarcomas, etc. But today we're talking about carcinomas arising, those arising from the epithelial cells and which invade and metastasize. This is an example of a lymphoma on the right. On the left is a picture of a benign lymph node with the T cells and the B cells and medulla and so on. Whereas on the right is an example of a lymphoma where these lymphoid cells have proliferated and formed large and small follicles and have infiltrated into the surrounding adipose tissue. So lymphomas are the kind of tumors or malignancies that most other vertebrates get and even some of the rodent models that are being used as they age they end up getting lymphomas but the carcinomas are pretty rare. So I'll go over a couple of uh, pieces of literature uh, that's out there talking about you know the first one here was published in um, 2009 talking about neoplasia in the chimpanzee. There, they described about 105 spontaneous and 12 experimental neoplasms. 74 of those spontaneous tumors occurred in females, 24 in males, 7 in animals, other animals. Of the spontaneous uh, tumors, 8 and 9 were benign, 14 were malignant, and 2 were undetermined. And most of these malignant tumors were unusual rare tumors, uh, carcinomas of the biliary tract, which are rare in humans, but were noticed in this particular chimp population. The next publication I wanted to highlight was this uh, uh, write-up by Dr. Finch, uh, Evolution of Human Lifespan and Diseases of um, Aging, back in 2010. And he's, he wrote, chimpanzees and other primates appear to develop much less neoplasia. And um, he remarked that no spontaneous mammary carcinomas have been reported. And in males 25 and years and older, there's benign prostatic, prostatic hyperplasia, but no neoplasia was noted. The next one, in going in order of uh, chronology, in 2015, we had uh, written up an observation, the apparent rarity of epithelial carcinomas in captive chimpanzees. Um, by, and because the about one in three humans in developed countries will develop a carcinoma, but this is rare in captive chimpanzees. The simple ascertainment bias is an unlikely explanation as these non-human uh, hominids are recipients of excellent veterinary care and research facilities and zoos and are typically subjected to necropsies when they die. In keeping with this notion, benign tumors and cancers that are less common in humans are well documented in this population. Uh, Dr. Lewinstein and colleagues uh, in 2016 then published a comparative pathology of aging great apes, looking at bonobos, chimpanzees, gorillas, and orangutans, and uh, commented that neoplasms common to aging humans and apes include uterine lyomas, lyomyomas, which are those fiber tumors in chimpanzees, but other tumors of elderly humans, such as breast, prostate, lung, colorectal cancers are uncommon in apes. 
and then the a group in um, at Yerkes in 2017 looked at 35 years of uh, chimpanzee pathology and observed uh, 1,362 spontaneous pathology lesions observed at necropsy or biopsy. And ca- cardiomyopathy was the most frequent lesion observed at the time with no mention about neoplasia. The same group again reported cause of death analysis over that same 35 year period, again showing cardiomyopathy as a primary cause with no mention of neoplasia. But in a table included in the, that was included, they showed that carcinomas were observed in about four of the chimpanzees that they did the necropsies on and late, and they do mention that lyomyomas of the uterus were also observed but there were no real um, these carcinomas were those odd ones of the biliary tract and so on that are rare in humans so now segue into the possible roles of silic acids and certain siglecs in adding fuel to the fire, allowing these carcinomas to occur in humans. So this is an introduction to the diversity in cell surface silic acids. So everyone's heard about DNA making RNA making protein, but the cell is not done until the glycans, the cell surface glycans are made. And at the very tips of these glycans are these uh, diamond shaped uh, tri- um, objects called silic acids. These silic acids are found on the surfaces of every cell, whether it's squamous or columna or cuboidal epithelium or whatever. And these silic acids are really important in interacting with circulating lymphocytes, monocytes, platelets, tumor cells, pathogens, and influence the progression and spread of human malignancies and certain aspects of human evolution, regulation of the immune response, and microbe binding, etc. There are two major kinds of silic acids on the mammalian cell surface. For ease, we've called them new 5 ac and new 5 gc the, the humans had an inactivation of the CMAH enzyme. The gene was inactivated about two to three million years ago. And so humans can, can only make new 5 ac and cannot convert to make new 5 gc so chimps and bonobos and gorillas and orangutan have both new 5 ac and new 5 gc but humans only have new 5 ac because we can't because of the lack of that gene so the consequence of not having the same age gene and loss of new 5 gc we think maybe due to the fact that when we ingest new 5 gc in food eating four legged animals as shown here that gc gets incorporated into the epithelium and we've shown in publications over the last couple of decades that all humans make anti-new 5GC antibodies. This circulating anti-new 5GC antibodies along with the new 5GC incorporation in the epithelium uh, contributes to a chronic inflammation, which is we are terming xenocyelitis, xeno, because the GC comes from outside, cyal, silic acid, itis, inflammation. And we've proposed that in several publications that this is what possibly complicates atherosclerosis because we've seen new 5GC in the endothelium and atheromas. And also this xenoxylitis, chronic inflammation, contributing to um, uh, cancer occurrence. And this next slide shows the new 5GC expression in endothelium. And in some normal tissues like prostate and and cancer and and colonic epithelium and in the blood vessels there as well. But when you get cancer like ovarian carcinomas, there's a lot of expression of the new 5GC in the endothelium and in the cancer as well, ovarian, prostate, colon, etc. Um, so that was the new 5GC story, and many of you have heard that before. Now, a uh, little bit on Siglex, and uh, this is a nice cartoon I thought I'd share to show the Siglex interaction with silic acid on the cell surface, uh, regulating immune homeostasis, immune escape by pathogens, and um, cancer cells as well. Among this group of cell surface 
proteins known as salic acid binding immunoglobulin like lectins or SIGLEX. The CD33 related SIGLEX are found in innate immune cells and are involved in cell signal signaling. One SIGLEC, however, appears to have gone rogue in humans. SIGLEC 12, included by the gene SIGLEC, SIGLEC 12, no longer binds salic acid and seems to be involved in abnormal cell signaling in humans. It could also play a role in cancer pro progression and he help explain why humans have a much higher incidence of carcinomas, cancers that, derive from, that arise from epithelial cells, where SIGLEC 12 is abundant than other great apes. Only about 30% of humans produce this rogue protein. Most people have a mutation that inactivates SIGLEC12. Comparing cohorts of cancer patients, we found that functional SIGLEC12 was associated with a poor prognosis in late stage, uh, late stage colorectal cancer patients. And this is that graph from that paper showing that the number of patients, there's a high percentage of patients in this col advanced colorectal cancer cohort that express SIGLEC12, and those patients did uh, poorly, the overall survival was much less than the patients that did not express SIGLEC12. So the abundance of expression of carcinomas, malignancy arising from epithelia with a much higher frequency, expected frequency of SIGLEC12 in cancers. So in normal people, SIGLEC12 is only expressed in about 30% of people, but in cancers, 80% of cancers expressed it. And advanced carcinomas are much more likely to occur in individuals Who's, who's, who have an intact SIGLEC12 gene, likely because they encoded SIGLEC12 protein um, uh, and SHIP-related on oncogenic pathways, and we're still working on the mechanism there. So this is just a panel to show you the multiple carcinomas that were examined in that study. Um, we looked at squamous carcinomas and adenocarcinomas and showed a high expression in the squamous carcinomas. There were a few that didn't re really express SIGLEC12. And the adenocarcinomas also, there was a high expression, but not as much as in the squamous carcinomas. So squamous carcinomas are those that arise in the head and neck, the tongue, the oral cavity, the esophagus, cervix, and so on. Thank you for your attention. During this time, when I tried to explain a little bit of uh, some research, research that's been ongoing as to why carcinomas are so prevalent in the human population as opposed to what is seen in the great apes. Thank you.